All right, so opening our, our art pieces for exercise two. If you left your files up on the computer screen, they get put into documents, right? And the document you need to find is your PSD file. You're going to open that up. The other extra step we're gonna to take today is you also want to open up just by double clicking on your reference image, Mac's default image viewer, which is a program called Preview. And you're just gonna open up your reference in Preview, make it pretty small and put it in the corner of your screen. And we'll come back to that a little later for some final decisions. All right, so we've set up our vector shape tools. This is the requirement for this project. By the end of it, you're going to turn off both reference layers so that all we see are your vector shape layers, all these shapes that you've made. And they should always stay as shape layers with that little icon in them. That allows them to be resized without losing any quality. But you're also going to upload this image, your reference image into PhotoBucket. So we see the composition that you're trying to approximate. So I have a very loose approximation. This is basically as minimal as I can go. So let's add a few more. I squint, what do I need? I need a little detail here. So I might work pretty quickly. Just do a dark shadow, pick the color. And then I can just duplicate that, Command J, Command T to rotate it, all the skills we used for um, cartoon jumble can come into play here. I can stretch it out. If I want to do Command Plus, I can zoom in, and then use click inside and transform it into place. Right. I can even right click and distort because this shadow is at a slight angle and then hit return. And then I can do that with the one behind it too, Command T. I can rotate it slightly, put it in perspective. I can right click and skew and bring one corner in, the other corner out bring it down. If I'm ever unclear about what these shapes are doing, if you get this to turn a live shape into a regular path because you've transformed it, you've changed it from the, the solid rectangle in my case to, to a weirder rhombus kind of shape, uh, you can click don't show again because all that matters is that it stays a vector path, whether it's a, a true, true shape or not. So to see what I've done, I just have to turn off this top layer that's floating at 50% above and I'll see. And then if I want the blue not to be outlined, I can just click on a non-vector layer. So that helps a little bit, but obviously we need something. We need the highlight there. So what I can do is I can just duplicate each of these. Command J, use the move tool, move it up. I can even use the arrows to nudge it into place, right? Command T to stretch it a little. And now, now I'm just going to change the color by double clicking within the, the vector window and then selecting. So now what do I have? I have that. And then the next one I can duplicate, but I want to now move this above everything. Move tool. Move the little crossbar there, Command T, stretch it out. Do they need to be perfect? Definitely not. This is about getting exposed to vector shapes in an easier way. And then color, steal it from what I've done. So that, just those little decisions that really occupied a part of the composition that was important.
Some, some other big areas, maybe the shadow under the bed. This is another good place for warping a rectangle or transforming one. Skew allows you to move the corners of a shape in a very orderly way where everything's kind of locked into place. And it can be good for trying to match perspective like so. <coughs> the difference between skew and distort is distort lets you kind of move a corner anywhere you want. It doesn't lock it based on the other corners. So it's a subtle difference. So after I put down a shape, I, I turn off that top layer, I check each one. And my goal isn't to have as many shapes as possible. My goal is to have the shapes that are necessary. Now I can tackle things like the hamburger. And I'm going to right click inside, or Command T, right click inside. Now let's try distort and see what this does. See, that drags down multiple corners, right? It's more free-floating. You can go either way with how you're moving the corners. And sometimes that can be helpful. You can also use warp along with distort or skew, which kind of puts it in perspective to get what you want. And if I want to flatten this side out, I can use warp without the distort grid on there. Basically, I just want kind of this wonky hamburger shape. But it's pretty flat on the bottom, so I'm going to kind of push and pull until it roughly imitates that. And then how do I pick the color? Just a placeholder color for now but I can find it from the image itself. Okay, now I have an important triangle here. I don't think I've done a triangle yet. So this is how you do a triangle. You go to the polygon tool, and up at, in the tool options, you'll have the number of sides. So a triangle has three sides. So the polygon tool with three sides will be a triangle. I'm going to put the color in there right away. Something kind of bold, move it in, and then how do I get it to be kind of a curved triangle? Well, Command T, I can scale it down, but I can also warp it or distort it or skew it, but the warp is going to give me that curve. But if that shape gets too fussy, then it's going to distract. But that's okay because I'm going to cover it up with. A nice red rectangle now. I'll steal that red from somewhere. And then I can soften that by warping it. and just turning that mechanical rectangle into something that feels more organic, like a tomato slice, by grabbing these anchor points, moving them around. Does not need to be perfect, just needs to suggest the composition. What about the big hamburger patty? Well, I'll do it the exact same way. But choose a brown instead, and then warp that with Command T, right click inside, warp, soften the edges, but there's an issue, right? So remember, it's just like cutting out paper, construction paper, 
but it matters what gets layered on top of what. So I want to teach you a shortcut. To drag this hamburger patty underneath the cheese triangle, I could just grab the layer, pull it down. But there's a shortcut that's really helpful, especially as you build up more and more layers. Just like you use Command plus to zoom in, Command minus to zoom out, and Command zero to fit it all on the screen, right underneath Command plus and minus, you have Command left bracket, which will move your layers down through. So whatever layer is selected, you can move it down through the layers. And then Command right bracket, which is right underneath Command plus, will move something up above the layers. So for instance, if I have my auto select layer turned on and I click on this, it will automatically select that rectangle. And then I can use command um, left bracket to move that down through the layers or command right bracket to move it up until everything kind of sits right. If I want to change the color, remember, you just double click on the window and I'm going to make that burger a little bit darker. Okay, now go back. Now, because I already have lettuce, tomato, and hamburger already designed, I'm just going to duplicate and move them down. And when I want to duplicate multiples, I can actually hold down command and select multiple layers. And then I can hit command J and it will make a copy of each of those. So it made like a little copy of those three layers as a sandwich on top. And now with all three of them selected, I can just move them all together. Just to be a little bit more efficient. Now just because I can move them together doesn't mean they're in the right shape. So they're still separate layers. So I'm going to take that cheese, for instance, and move it individually and transform it. And if I need to kind of skew it, distort it, to better fit that composition. Same thing with the hamburger patty. It needs to be a little taller in this instance. Actually, it shows me that this one needs to be a little bit higher. <laughs> and then the tomato. What's great about locking is your auto select will work even though you have this hovering above everything. Because it's locked, my reference layer is locked, it, it can't select that layer. So I can find this tomato underneath, kind of transform it in, and bend the top up a little bit without too much work, without having to choose new colors or anything. I'm getting my hamburger shapes, right? But it's not about copying details, it's about the composition. So what am I missing? I'm missing these little organic shapes that are breaking out of the glow. So for that, I'll use the custom shape tool. And I like the, the funky cloud. I think that will work well. And then I'm going to pick the color, but I want it to be a little bit more green than that. There we go. Let's just see how that looks. Now let's move that down behind. Then I can make a duplicate of it, use the move tool, move that down behind, layer it up on top. And so that they don't look so identical, I can warp it. I can even just flip it horizontally and stretch it out a little differently. and customize all these things. Now I'll show you a quick trick. So I want the white drink in there, right? Or I want the drip, I'll do this, because that drip of, of uh, ketchup is really important. But I don't want to have to make it out of a bunch of shapes layered up on top of each other. So as long as it's a vector shape, you can do it. So I'm going to use the freeform pen tool, which is right above the text tool. You're not required to do this, but this is how you make shapes for yourself. You can make your own custom shape. And I'm just simply going to click 
and draw all the way around this really weird